Hi guys, today I'll be making a different sort of uh, tutorial, this one about how to make a low poly AK-47 in Blender. Now to start off we need to add a quick reference image, so just go to add uh, image and then select your reference image. I just found a random one on the internet. You kind of want one with a side view because that will generally give you the best results. Uh, and it's definitely easier to model with, so you know, just find one. Loop cut the, s the uh, cube in the middle with control R and delete a half and then we want to mirror it. So that's generally what you need to do when you're modeling something symmetrical, right? Because you don't want to have to make changes to one side and then identical changes to the other side and it's going to look really bad. I don't need to explain to you why you need to mirror it. Now you want to scale down the uh, cube on the uh, x-axis right now just because you don't want it to be a bit too blocky. You can't really tell with a side view, which is why it's helpful to have more than one reference image sometimes, but uh, for this case, it doesn't really matter. What we're doing right now is just blocking it out. So uh, since I'm not recording this in real time, I think I'm just going to skip over some of the more tedious parts. But the general idea here is that we're going to separate this, this model into a bunch of sections that seem to make sense. So I'll give uh, the body, which includes, uh, well, I guess the body, and we'll add the trigger and the handle into this, so that's the foregrip or whatever the heck that is. And basically what we're doing is adding loop cuts. So control R, wherever you want to split it, split the uh, face, and we're going to adjust the positioning of these loop cuts. Whenever you want to have sharp edges, you kind of want to have two loop cuts pretty close to each other, and don't worry about putting too many, because uh, even like a low poly model like this one, it's going to be, I mean, if you're imagining 100 vertices, that's not going to happen. So you're definitely going to have a lot of vertices, but uh, just by loop cutting, you're not going to be able to make very many, so don't worry about it. Just put loop cuts where you feel like you need more detail, and just kind of mold the mesh to your image. What you're doing here is basically tracing stuff in 2D. And yeah, so I'm just going to continue doing that. And I'll speed it up. So now here, you for the handle part, uh, you see, this isn't exactly flush with the edge of the whole of the body of the gun. It's kind of uh, a bit thinner than it. So what you want to do is make a loop cut along the bottom face of the of the gun, and then you want to select that piece and extrude it out. So you have kind of like a, a shelf like that. Same goes for where we're going to put the trigger and the magazine release, as well as the upper half of the gun, which I which is why I haven't modeled it yet. Okay, so where we have the top of the gun, we're going to want to select all the upper faces um, and we want to use only the parts that are inset. So uh, don't select those those edges closest to the side. You can use this um, control B and just box select and that might save you a little bit of time, but it might also just be smarter uh, instead of selecting all the faces and deselecting the ones closest to the edge, just select the ones that are already inset and all you have to do is extrude them upwards. You you can also see how the the top of the gun isn't like completely flat like that. It's got a bit of a curve towards the middle, like it's rounded. So we're going to put a couple more loop cuts into it and we're going to continue tracing. Make sure also that when you're doing this, um, only to scale stuff uh, on like one axis at a time and not on a lot. Otherwise your model is going to start looking like weird and you're going to end up getting distortions. Also make sure you edit things in wireframe because otherwise you're going you might end up only selecting part of a face or part of like or one set of edges and it's going to again distort your model. So yeah, just look around every once in a while 
with your middle mouse button and just uh, rotate with the trackpad so you can see what your model looks like and to make sure you haven't made any dumb mistakes. All right, so now we're just gonna make a quick cut for where we want the charging handle to be. And uh, an easy way to do this is make two sort of parallel loop cuts, and then you just want to move the vertices to where uh, you think this inset, um, this slot for the, the bolt thing uh, is supposed to be. So we're just making loop cuts about around where this, uh, this inset part is going to bend and we'll just shift them into place. Simple as that. Once we're done, all we have to do is extrude it inwards and we have, we've cut sort of a, a, a shaped divot into our model. Also, remember, uh, this slot thing is only on one side of the gun, so you don't want to actually extrude it in yet. We're going to wait until after we apply the mirror modifier to do that. Now, as we continue to trace the outlines of the mesh, remember that you need to consider how thick everything is. So we are going to change the sizes, I guess, um, the widths of each of the individual components, especially for the trigger because that's uh, quite thin compared to the rest of the gun. So you want to look up at the model, so you want to rotate your viewport, so you're looking up at it from the bottom, and you want to adjust you want to adjust the parts that you're going to extrude. So you can uh, either inset this or just extrude it and scale it down, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Here I'm just extruding it, and then you can start tracing again. So just make sure to take that into consideration, the varying thicknesses of things in the model uh, as you're modeling. Now what we want to do is separate the back of the gun to make the stock to make a separate object. So just select the back faces, hit P, um, and then separate by selection. And now we're going, to ha we're going to have a new plane that we can work with, a totally separate object from the body. This isn't entirely necessary, but I prefer doing this just so I can uh, manipulate different parts of the, of the uh, gun with a bit more control. And we're just going to go with the same tracing idea as previously. So, carry on. Alright, same technique here for the upper part of the grip. At least I think this is a grip. So we're going to select the part that we want to uh, separate. And we're going to duplicate it. And now we have a plane that's completely unattached, so just extrude it up, and now you can do that same uh, tracing method we were doing before.
Now for the magazine. This isn't really that tricky. I'm gonna try to use the spin modifier, but I'm not really sure how to use this in Blender 2.8, and it's not really working out too well for me, so uh, don't. It's pretty easy actually. All you have to do is extrude and rotate uh, as you go, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. Once I figure out the spin thing is pointless. Come on. Okay, so all you have to do is select the bottom base, extrude it in the direction you want it to be, and rotate it so it fits. Just keep on doing that. You don't have to make too many extrusions because we're doing a low poly model, so yeah, just keep it like that. And right now the magazine, you want to be a little bit more detailed than the rest of the mesh with all the uh, surface details, otherwise it's going to look a bit flat. So we're going to make a couple of loop cuts, just following the grooves in the magazine. And we're going to extrude them, just so we can create that uh, bumpy effect. All right, that's looking good. Now we don't have much really left, just the barrel, and that's super easy. All we've got to do is add a cylinder, and we're going to stretch it out. You can always, you can delete the um, front face uh, like the cap of the cylinder facing you because we're not really going to need that uh, If you actually had that in real life Then the gas that comes out of this would hit hit it and probably cause the barrel to explode So yeah, just remove it Now for this curve thing at the edge, we're going to use uh, a technique Where we're going to use Oh man, I forgot what it's called What is this called? Anyways, we're just going to make uh, things move uh, as if they're stuck because I, wow, really can't remember what this is called. This isn't my day. Anyways, we're going to select the bottom edges and we're going to hit O and then we're going to scroll up a lot and we're going to change the side. Oh, right, proportional editing, that's what it's called. So we're going to change, we're going to change it and that's kind of like sticky editing. So we're going to only select a couple of the vertices but that's going to drag everything else in the sphere of influence towards it based on how far, uh, with the strength based on how far away it is. Um, so yeah, make sure you also turn that off once you're done. Now we need a solidify modifier. Uh, I mean, that doesn't really make too much of a difference because, you know, we're not going into too much detail, but it's good to have this barrel have a little bit of thickness. And yeah, we're just going to continue like this. Uh, the model is pretty much done except for the rest of the barrel um, and the front sight. All of this is just modeled with cylinders and cubes that I extrude a little bit. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. So I will get back to you once we start doing the materials. Alright, now that we're done the tedious stuff, uh, I'm going to just switch to real time. So, what we have left to do is a couple of these minor surface details, uh, as well as the lighting and materials. So right now, oops, sorry, right now we're going to 
focus in on the body, which we've got wireframes, and we're just going to cut a couple of holes. So this uh, square, which I'm going to have no idea what it's for, I'm going to edit mode, add a new text around it, just like that. Set it. Um, make sure you don't ha if you have it as individual, which kind of hard to see at the bottom, then it's going to do this. You want to have the two faces kind of inset together, so you need to hit I a second time. And then we'll drag it in a little bit with G and straight it in with E and scale that down. And that's about as far as it. And now the other one that we want is for the charging rail or something, charging bolt, whatever. So this only actually appears on one side of the gun. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to have two bolts. So uh, we're going to first make sure we don't want to add any other detail, at least on the body, and we're going to apply the mirror. Now I previously already cut out a section for this, you can see, maybe you can't see. So there's these couple of faces that we have, and basically all you have to do is select all of them and extrude them in. However, when you're doing this, make sure you don't accidentally select the other side. only on the side of the gun that's facing us and it might select the back, back faces so you need to make sure that doesn't happen so be careful just shift click oops, you can kind of tell if you select something in the back because it will be overshadowed a little bit by the ones in the front when you dim it and you want to check at the end just in case but there's not too many vertices here so it's pretty straightforward now if you want you might want to inset Inset this again. Make sure again that it's not an individual. And then we'll exit out of edit mode. And we'll select this background image and we'll hit H to hide it. H to hide it. And we have a model. And if we change it to render view, you can see what it looks like. Alright, so we might want to add a couple of bevels on these back edges here, because that doesn't look super realistic. So we'll just select them, and this, by the way, is something you should do before applying the mirror modifier. Okay. We'll just select the edges, and we'll scale them down on the x-axis. And immediately that looks a lot better. So we'll do that, and we'll do the same here. So you're going to need one edge that kind of traces the outer edge. I'm not sure what these are called, but uh, this is generally how you make a bevel. And you just want to grab the outer edge. It's actually still a funny thing if you have something this uh, close together. And then you just want to scale it down wherever you want your bevel to be. So on the set axis first. So you have this line that's going across. On the back face, we also want a bit of a bevel at the end of the stock. So we'll just select this face and scale it down. And great. You might see this weird artifact over here with the shading. That's because the face isn't really flat. So you want to select it and hit Ctrl T and you'll triangulate it. 
then we're going to do triangle. And that's not really ideal or good practice, but this is a low poly model, and we can kind of get away with that sort of thing. Okay, now, so materials. That shouldn't be too difficult. We're going to go for a tomb shaded sort of look. And now I'm just going to hit Alt H to show this. So you can see that there's only like two materials we really need uh, a wood material and uh, a sort of gunmetal material. And that makes our job a lot easier. But for this body mesh, because it has both this wood part and the metal part, we're going to have to separate it or we can apply the materials individually. But let's just start with, say, the magazine. Now you can hit backsplash. I think that's a backsplash. And then we'll focus on it individually. That's weird. Okay, anyways, we'll just look at this. Come on. Okay, maybe it's taking it down to 2.8. Never mind. Okay, we're just going to look at this. Uh, now, I think rendering in cycles is... I'm not sure if this will work. I think we might want to try easy for this. Just because it'll be a bit faster. And we need the shade of RGB mode, of course. So we want this to be metallic. And also uh, change it away from left dark, just put it into the viewport. We're going to turn down the roughness. Go to much other one. Turn up the metallic. And yeah, that's pretty much all we have to do. Now, for that tomb look, we just need to add a color ramp. Set this to constant interpolation. And. I'm just going to put a simple sunlight, just a little bit. Great, so now what color do we want this to be? Maybe like darkish gray? Lighter gray, and something in the middle. And we have like a nice light wing shading sort of setup. Okay, we're gonna add some more light later. Uh, but right now, we're just gonna leave it like that. We could turn up the brightness a little bit more. And then we just switch this to a point light. You can kind of see the outline. This might be a little bit dark actually. Maybe just place it. a couple more surface details. Now this is going to be a bit of fine tweaking, so I'm going to take a while, but... Oh, there we go. And we'll call this material gun metal. So, any other components we have that are... Uh, that only have this gun metal texture, like... Uh, mostly things for this barrel. These parts, these are all metal. So we can just select this with the rest selected, hit Ctrl L and materials, and now they all automatically have the same material applied to them. So that's really easy. Now for the wood texture, the only thing that we have, like only the wood, is the back part, the stock, sorry. So we're gonna call this wood. And we'll go through the same process. This time, wood has a pretty high roughness. If you want, you can actually use an image texture, but uh, the thing is that when you're making low poly models, having like a high resolution image texture doesn't really fit, right? Because um, the model quality is low. So having like a super highly detailed image texture is gonna look a bit incongruous. So I'm just gonna go with with simple colors. So again, we're going to have 
shader tar gd remember you can't do this in cyclis because that does not support the shader tar gd node yet or maybe ever yeah. yeah we'll just tweak this until we have something that's good and there we'll have a lightish brown really dark brown and something in between Uh, now, the problem with this is that we'll need a couple more lights to make it show up. Not only right now here. I think having maybe a couple more colors might make it look better. Just apply the same thing right here. Oh, and remember, so what we have right now is so the parts that are meant to be metal is most of this, uh, with the exception of I'm gonna unhide the reference, with the exception of uh, this part, I have no idea what it's for, um, probably a grip or something, and this handle. So what we want to do is first apply, so the part that this has the most of is the metal texture, so we'll just give that as the base. Done metal. Great, now the whole thing's metal, so we gotta fix that. How are we gonna do that? Simple, because Blender allows you to s apply different materials to different parts of your mesh. What we have to do is select this part, select the parts that are supposed to be wood, that. And you might want to do it one at a time just in case you make a mistake. So we'll hit plus, add a new material slot, wood, and the side. And there we go. We have the texture right there. And now we just have to do this with the grip part. You just again select it. Now this might be a little bit more tricky because it's the uh, geometry here is a bit more complex. But that's working alright. We'll just give it a try. Yeah, so at these material boundaries, like right here, that's a bit jarring. So what you might want to do is add sort of a, a cut in the material. So maybe along this edge. You can like extrude it in a little bit. Even if you don't have any weird vertices there. Yeah, I'll just check that. And we'll just extrude it in, so we'll press E, and then hit X, and there we go. Now we have a nice, even split in the material, and we'll go do the same right here. This will be a lot easier. Oops. We just have to select this edge. Oh, we want to make them on the other side too. So this might have been a thing to do before applying the mirror modifier, by the way. For future reference, not that you'd know that by the time this video comes out, because most people don't watch this, and then in entirety, most people just follow along and not quite know what we're talking about. Anyways, don't listen to me. I'm just rambling. Just to give it a little bit more depth and not have a soft side. Can you run it? Take your side. Alright, so I'll hide this. And next, we have to do the environment and a bit more lighting work. Okay, so what we have to do with the shading is make a lot of contrast these parts that do have some like gradients are the parts that actually look good the rest of it looks flat so how are we going to fix this let's set up the environment first so 
to go back to our default window and we're going to focus the camera so maybe at this angle hit control alt zero and we have our camera here now we don't want to just have this against like a flat background or maybe we have a plane like this and then this way and we're going to make sort of like a studio, I don't know what this is called. Anyways, we just want to make a sort of curved surface like this. Now put an edge width all the way up here because we're going to subdivide it and we don't want this bottom part to start curving. So hit control 2, draw it up a little bit. Now we have a surface for our lights to fall on and to create shadows. And you might want to give this an interesting color, kind of like blue or something. the environment we might want to up the lighting a little bit but not too much otherwise we're going to have to really adjust how the shaders look the position of the color okay so why don't we just turn up a little bit now you can see all of these have defaulted to pretty much just the brightest settings oops and we can see that it didn't actually give the material to that small bit but we're going to want to just sign back to done metal okay Great, now this is all flat again, because the light falling on it falls in this range of gray, so it's not going to work. It's going to just assign it this color. You go inside the mesh, same thing, because we don't have back faces. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. So we're just going to do a bit of adjustment to the radiance right now. And this will give us a little bit more leeway. Now the thing that's a little bit annoying about this is that every time you change your lighting, you're gonna have to like redo this. You adjust how your shading looks. Not exactly sure where we're fine at. Okay, so we're gonna have like the last color that there. Same for Beef Gun Metal. We just move everything up. Nice and simple. We have highlights, turns, and shadows. Perfect. So we might want to uh, change the lighting a little bit. I like having a bit more detail. So maybe we'll have a light coming down like this, alongside the other point plants to kind of highlight the important parts of the model. This area line. I want to make sure not to change strength to be too high, but I, I would like to see a shadow on the ground. Yeah, that looks pretty cool already. We can actually do the same uh, shaders RGB tune setup here. If you wanted to like adjust the color of the shadow, be something in particular. We change it to constant, and now you can see we have a, we can do some cool effects with the shadows that might be a bit weird on the edges. We have this really light one, we have a darker color, and we'll put a couple of stops in between. So maybe first I'll change this to ease, 
just so that we can automatically generate a sort of polygraph. And then we can give you the constant there. Okay, that doesn't look great. And we want everything to get a bit more sciony. is proving a little bit difficult. Yeah, I'd have to turn up the brightness of this quite high, I think, to be able to have any effect. Oh, that's okay. And we really want to accent the all the details on this magazine. So, from this angle, we might have to change the position of a couple of things. Things like that. And then second thought, maybe this frame sliding doesn't really help very much. Since we're in EV, there's a couple more things we can do. Squeeze this reflection for one. Turn up the glossy a bit on this. It's not subsurface, metallic. Go up a little bit. And there, just tweak that to your liking, I think. I think that's a pretty good idea. Okay, so one more thing we might want to add is the bolt over here that slides back. And that should be fairly simple. All we need is a here. And you could extrude it back if you wanted, but eh, why not? So we'll hit I to inset this base. We'll hit E and now we have a bolt. Simple. We'll insert it into here. same gunmetal material. Or if you wanted, you could actually make this a slightly lighter material than the normal gunmetal. To make sure it fits into that groove we've made. We'll have that flip back. So if you want to change this material a little bit, all you have to do is hit this to make it a new texture. So we'll call it bolt. Sorry, new shader. We'll call it bolt. And we can just I don't know, we could turn this a bit yellow or something. No, it does it pretty good. Just make it a bit brighter. So we'll just increase the brightness of all of these. Just a little bit. And there we go, we have another we have a bolt. So this will slide back and forth. And yeah. Now we have a we'll call it AK. Now if you wanted if you guys want, I can make another tutorial about animating this. I might do that anyways. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe and all that. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, one thing I forgot to mention. Now, if we just look at it like this, that's it looks pretty good already. But one thing we can do is add tree style, which will give it a beautiful outline really quickly. And there we go. That's a lot better, actually. I'll show you in the larger view. Now, when we do animate this, and I've made up my mind about this, I think I want to show you how to make this actually fire. We're going to add um, some muzzle flares at the end, bell casing from this this bolt sliding back and forth. So I'll show you how to animate this in the next video. And yeah, so I don't, so in case you haven't noticed, I don't exactly plan these tutorials out. It's kind of a freeform thing that I do. So uh, sorry if I'm being a little bit incoherent or rambling or whatever. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know that 
pretty much how I usually make my tutorials. Anyways.